Good afternoon, and welcome to K2's Road to Excellence with Excel Series Part 6 and our partner, Walters Kluwer. This is Alan Salmon, and I'm pleased that so many of you have been able to join me for our last mini-webinar in March. So let's get started. First of all, a bit of administration before we start. Your microphones are muted. Just the presenters will be presenting. And I'm pleased that Marilyn Benninger, my good friend, is with us today. She is your go-to person for technical problems and for questions. You ask all the questions that you want in the chat window. And within 10 days of today, all of you will receive the recording, my teaching notes, my teaching files, and the answers to all of the questions. Four times during the next hour, for those of you that haven't been with us before, Marilyn will be putting up a polling question. And that's a multiple choice question. And you need to answer one of those questions the answer doesn't have to be right, but that date stamps the fact that you're in attendance. And if you date stamp or select a question or an answer in three of the four responses, with the mailing, you will get a certificate for one hour of verifiable CPDs. If you don't, it'll be non-verifiable. Now, I'm going to cover things not super fast, but reasonably fast because I have a lot of content to cover in the next uh, 27 minutes. Feel free to take notes, but understand that you will get my detailed notes and the teaching files so that you can replicate what I'm going to do today. So where are we going today? Well, the topic is charts. And for most of us, and I'm including me in that, Charting for a long time was a real challenge. I remember how much trouble I had with charting in Lotus 1, 2, 3 and the first versions of Excel, and it was not a pleasant experience. But that has changed, and my target today or my objective today is show you how easy it is to create elegant charts. So on that note, Marilyn, can we have the first poll, please? Absolutely, Alan. Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are in the country today. I'm going to launch our first poll, folks. You should see three choices. Pretty easy first question. Have you ever used charts? Never? Maybe a few times, but you don't understand them. Or maybe you use them regularly where it's appropriate. We close our poll when we see 90% and we're just about there. So I'm going to count you down from five, four, three, two, and one. Let's get those results up for you there, Alan. That's just about what I expected, Marilyn. So by the end of the next little bit, I wanna change those numbers. So let's get started. And the first thing that I wanna do with you and for you is talk or not talk, but show you some various chart types. And there are a lot. So what do we got here? Well, we've got what we call a column chart. It's typical. It's used a lot. I'm using 128 of them in the survey report that I'm just doing. And there are times when we need a bar chart. So there we go. And you'll notice that I've exploded the third quarter into a, into a stack chart to break out customer A, B, and C. And that's not too difficult. And then we have this chart, and it goes by a number of names depending on how the data is displayed. I could turn this into a line chart. The other name for it is an XY chart or a scatter grab. Next, and this will probably blow most of you away, is a radar chart. And in my opinion, it's the most difficult chart to understand. By the way, if any of you have ever used a radar chart, would you send a note to Marilyn in the chat window? Because when I was teaching in the classroom, 
I would show this and say, I never used it and I never will. And twice in my many years of teaching, two people said, I use it all the time. So I had to understand why. And one was in a hospital environment. And the problem with radar charts is zero is at the center and the maximum points are out here. A bubble chart, kind of neat. The data, so the size of the bubbles is related to the data. And here's a chart that I use once in a while. It's called a thermometer chart. So if I change this to 75%, there we go. And then if you want to make it a little more elegant, we turn it into a Tim Horton chart. And that's Alan's humor for today. That is a half of a donut chart. And then we can enhance it even more with a tack chart. And all of these respond to whatever the number is here. Now, this chart currently is tracking the 12 months of the year with sales. Sorry, 12 days with the sale. If I delete these rows, watch the right-hand side of the chart change. In other words, this chart, this chart, if I was using it for real, would only have one bar for the first day. And as I added days, I would get more bars. Well, that's too much work. So I made a change here. And up here at the top, can you see the down triangle, the up triangle, and the number six? I know it's very small. That's a spinner. So watch what happens if I click with my left mouse button on the up arrow or up triangle. Do you see that I'm adding things? And there we go. Another way of doing that is to use check boxes. So over here, I have three checkboxes. If I just want to see accounts receivable, I do that. Now, for the first time in many, many of my webinars, I will be I will still be teaching in 2016. But for those of you on 2010 and 7, there will be one tool that you can't use. And for those of you on 2016, there are six new charts. But for the very basic and really elegant charts, all, all four of you, the, those of you on 16, 13, 10, and 7 will be with me. So let's move to this one. And actually, this one I'm going to show you because it's not difficult to do. The problem with this is notice that my sales run from zero to almost 700, just over 600. But my secondary axis, the margin runs from 0.6 to 0.7. So if I didn't have that secondary axis, that data would be a flat line between zero and one. And this is really easy to do. And then in 2016, it's very easy to create a waterfall chart. Now, normally, the zero point is at the bottom of the chart on the x-axis. With a waterfall chart, it's at the maximum value, and then it comes down from there. Now, I like it in when I'm dealing with this because it makes it very easy. What's my labor? It jumps out at me. Another chart in 2016 is a funnel chart. And then the final thing that I want to show you in 2016 is mapping. 
Now my data here is tracking data for six states. And there's the states and there's the data. <coughs> Excuse me. And what I do when I create this is link the data to Microsoft Bing, which, which then creates the map and creates the data for the states. So for example, if I hover over Colorado, values 200 and so on, and then it puts a thermometer scale here showing me the gradients from 175 to 350. Now, the last four or five charts that I've showed you, there is no way I can do today. Each of them would take about 20 minutes to do, to teach you to do. And that is beyond the time I have today, but I want to expose you to them. And at the end of the webinar, I'll show that I'll tell you how you can get advanced training. So let me close this session with pivot charts. Now, underneath this, there is a pivot table. And underneath the pivot table, there is the data set. And within the pivot chart, I've now got this. So if I click here, I don't want 2011. I can filter it and say, just give me 2012. And then I can go on and say, what quarter do I want? Quarter four. And then I can go down here. And what service line do I want? Well, let's just do cloud services and virtualized services. And there we go. I can filter it a last time for what industry. And I'm going to take clean tech. And there I go. And once again, that's an advanced one. So let's move on and let's start with this because I want to create a chart from this data. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. Whenever possible, I want the data organized like this. So I have my column headers there <coughs> and I have in this case, north, south, east here, and then my data. So the first thing I'm going to do is go here and create an instant chart, but I'm not going to show you how I did it until after you see it. Well, was that magic? So the first question you're going to have, and remember this is all in my notes, is how did Alan do it? Well, I used two keys. I used the Alt key and then function key F1. And that's one of four ways that I can generate a chart. I'm going to do it again with a different key, and I'm going to get the same chart, but it's now on a different, I mean, a new sheet, as you can see here. And then shortly, I will show you a third way. Let me come back to here. Actually, let me get a new file. There we go. So the <clears throat> key thing before we start is what type of chart are you going to use? And the answer, of course, is it depends. So if we're comparing items to other items, in this case, north, south, east. We typically use a column chart, a bar chart, a cylinder chart, a cone, or a pyramid. If we're creating data over time, we use lines and area charts. And if we're comparing one data point to another, we use a pie or a donut chart. Casual relationships? an XY chart. If the data varies widely, as we saw there, we use a combo chart. 
The next thing is the chart elements, and most of them you're familiar with. So here we've got a chart title, we've got the y-axis, we've got the x-axis, and we've got the uh, <coughs> legend. As soon as I select the, ch the entire chart by clicking inside there, I get the plus sign here. And when I do that, that pops up a checkbox. So if I want access titles, know that I have them. If I want data labels, the very top, there it is. If I want a table with my data underneath the chart, there it is. And uh, grid lines, we've got horizontal, error bars and trend lines don't apply here. And we can change any of the elements. So let's do a change here. I've selected the Y axis and I right click, mouse click and I go to format the axis. And my minimum now is zero, maximum 180. So let's change that, the major axis to 30. And then let's go down here to number. And what I want to do here is this. It's currently formatted to the accounting format two decimal places. I don't need any decimal places. Now watch what happens when I click on here and click on here because I don't need that. That's what I want. and so on. The next issue is this, and I'm going to go back to my previous chart for just a second. <coughs> if I add some West data, so we'll make this 140, 150, 160, and 170, you notice that my chart didn't change because the chart thinks that my data set is there. So how do we f fix that? Well, there's a very easy way. As Soon as I select the chart title, look up here above the design and format tab, and there's a chart tools tab. And that creates two new ribbons, one called the design and one called the format. We won't deal with the format today, but I'll spend a little bit of time on the design. And notice that we have select data here. And I'm gonna delete this like this. And I'm gonna do this. Guess what? There's my north, but that's really a lot of work. So I'm going to do an undo, and I'm going to delete this data. And then I'm going to do something that I shared with you in the last session, and that was dealing with tables. So I'm going to go up to the Home tab. I'm going to go over again, Format as Tables. I don't need it to be fancy, and yes, that's the range. Now that I've done that, let me paste this information right there. Do you get it? So if I'm when I do charts, my first step is to organize the data. My second step is to turn it into a table. And my third step is then to build the chart. Now I'm going to show you something here that is new and was new in 2013 and 2016, and then I'll show how you, the rest of you can do it. If I go to insert chart, over here I've got all my chart types. But notice that I've got a recommended chart. Those of you on 2010 and 2007 won't have it. 
And when I click on that, Excel looks at the data and says, that's what I think you should have. Or how about that? Or how about that? Or how about that? Well, I like the first choice, and I usually do. So there's my chart. Now, what about you people on 2010 and 2007? You will go to the insert, and you will have to guess what type of chart. And here we have the different types, columns, lines, etc. So in 2010, you would go here, and then you've got choices. I like the 3D column, so you're not left out. Now let's deal with this problem. We've got sales going from 431 to 577. We've got a margin rate going from 0.67. <laughs> if I create a line chart, which is the obvious one for this, I'll just pick this first one. And there's what I was talking about before. The data for sales is fine. The data for margin is a flat line. So how do I deal with that? Well, I select the red line by clicking on it, and I right mouse click, and I go to Format Data Series. And notice now I have the ability to do a plot on the primary axis, which it's doing, and that's this area here, or a second secondary axis. And now it's there. But now that I've done that, this is very difficult to understand. So I'm going to go to Insert, Recommended Charts, and it recommends this. So that's all I had to do to create that elegant chart that's perfectly understandable. Now this is a little data set with 26 items tracking weeks, plan, and actual. And I want to turn this into a line chart, which is very easy for me to do. I'm going to go to Insert, Recommended Charts, and I like that one. Okay, so the blue line is my plan. The red line is my actual. So one of the things that I want to see, in addition to how we're doing, is is there going to be a gap when we get over here to the 26th week between planned and actual? Then the way I do that is to create a trend line. Easy to do. I select the actual data. I right mouse click and G what's down here. And there we go. So we've got a gap. So do I ever use this? Absolutely. Some of you are well aware that in the fall, I manage a series of seminars across Canada called the Accounting Technology Seminar Series. We open for registrations in May, and I will track the registrations in an Excel spreadsheet every day from May to October. By about the middle of June, even earlier, I will apply a trend line. Now, last year we had 1,730 odd registrations. Um, the trend line told me I was going to get 1,740. And it told me that consistently from about the middle of June. So I want to do one last thing before I turn it over to Shannon, and that's this the objective of a chart is to communicate data, usually accounting data, that's hard to understand from the data set. And of course, we do this by, in this case, the height of these column charts. And I've used what I call a standard title, name of company, and defect rate by quarter. 
And that tells me a little bit, but it doesn't really jump out at me. Now look at the same chart with a different title. Which one do you think I would use? The top one, why? Because I look at the title and that communicates really what the chart and the underlying data is all about. And then I can go to the column bars and see the actual results. The other thing that I will do with my charts is this. Now that's the same fly, uh, chart that you saw a minute ago and at the very start. But when you saw them, when I initially created them, they were all blue. So if you look at the data, it's increasing in quarter one, two, and decreasing in quarter four. So. I have changed the color to make it stand out. So how did I do that? Well, I clicked on any bar. Well, not, I clicked on the red bar. And if your eyesight is really good, there's circles around each of them. So I've selected all of the columns. If I click once more, I only selected this red one. And then all I do is go to format the data point and change the color. And on that note, I am done. I will have some more information about taking this to the next step at the end of my webinar. So Marilyn, it is time to do the second poll. My pleasure, Alan. So folks, you should be seeing the second poll for our webinar today. After all of Alan's great tips and tricks, are you now going to start using charts to explain your financial data? Your choices are no, maybe if I have time, or absolutely. I think you've impressed quite a few people today, Alan, as always. We're at 90%, folks. Thanks for your responses. So I'm going to be closing the poll in 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And there are your results, Alan. Well... I think I've done my job for today. So it's time for me to take a rest for 30 minutes. And let's bring in Shannon from Walters Kluwer. Welcome. Hey, Shannon, I've just made you the presenter and we see your screen. Oh, that's great. Thank you. So welcome, everybody. My name is Shannon Perrette. I'm a CPA and solution architect for Walters Kluwer. And I'm very excited to share CCHI firm with you. We want to take your firm to the future. And just before we get started, Marilyn, I definitely would like to start with my first poll question. It'll really help guide me for my presentation today. Absolutely, Shen. Thank so you. So folks, you should be seeing the next poll question. If you would share with us, please, what your current role is. Perhaps you're a partner, a staff accountant. You might be a sole proprietor, an office manager, or a bookkeeper. Hopefully one of those is your primary role and a choice that you can make for us today. Responses are coming in great. I'm just going to count you down from five, four, three, two, and one. Thanks, everybody. I'm closing the poll now, and we'll just share those results. Can you see those, Shannon? A good cross-section, folks, today. Yeah. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Okay. okay. So hopefully you're all familiar with Walters Kluwer, formerly CCH, so we are tax and accounting leaders providing innovative software solutions and, of course, uh, expertise and help in tax accounting. So I just wanted to start um, just a little bit of a background in explaining uh, our CCH iFirm product. Um, so Walters Kluwer went searching a few years ago looking for the best new practice management solution we could bring to the accounting landscape in Canada. So we were really focusing on these four A's. Accessibility being number one. CCHI firm is cloud-based. We wanted it to be accessible for you and your staff, whether they want to work at home, work at a client's office, coffee shop, and of course be able to access it on a tablet or mobile phone as well. So that was our number one priority. Accountability, right? Most of you are using two or three different software programs. They're not integrated. They're not talking to each other. So with this seven module integrated practice management platform, 
accountability starts to become very apparent without you having to do all the analytics of bringing those pieces together. And when we talk about agility and adaptability, that really speaks to the real-time aspect of CCHI firm. No longer can we wait a week or a month to run reports and make decisions. iFirm is in real time allowing you to be very agile, reach out to your clients, chat with your staff, and really have a great handle on your practice. So we did speak with accountants across Canada. These were probably the top five things we hear over and over again. So I'm sure you can read through these and resonate with one or two of them. Do you just feel like you're not gaining efficiency? There's so much more legislation and things we have to worry about, which really is stunting our firms from really feeling like we're gaining efficiency and getting better and faster. Are you struggling in tracking all of your WIP and jobs that you have? Do you use Excel? A lot of firms use Excel to track things, so you're losing time updating those Excel spreadsheets as well, manual errors and issues. So these are some of the things we really wanted to combat when we went looking for iFirm. So just to step back a little bit, just to give you an overview, we found CCHI Firm in New Zealand, but it's been around for 18 years. So you're definitely not getting a brand new off-the-shelf software program. It's been around globally in multiple countries. We've already uh, launched more than 800 firms in Canada with this platform since we launched in September of 2015. Now, why this is such a perfect fit for all types of firms, whether you're a bookkeeper or, you know, in an accounting firm or doing a T1s, doing bookkeeping, a notice to readers, any kind of firm, um, you know, we have a fit for you. It's mobile access. You're going to be able to log in wherever you need. Your staff can work at a client site. They don't need to come back into the office to update timesheets, transition a job to another staff member. They can do that all remotely. You're no, you'll have no installation required, so no infrastructure upgrade needed. You don't need to buy servers. And really, if you have IT support, they don't need to worry at all. They can focus on what other things you have for them because we keep everything in the current version. When you and your staff log in to CCHI firm, you're always getting the most current versions with all the features and functionality that we're adding almost on a monthly or bi-monthly basis. We also always back it up for you, so it is backed up in real time. You don't have to worry about that. And we securely host your CCHI firm environment in Canada. So we have two data centers, one in Vancouver and one in Toronto. And of course, if you're familiar with logging into your bank and paying bills, seeing your financial situation, that's the type of uh, encryption environment that we're providing for you, very similar to the world's top banking institutions. So you're well protected and covered. So just what we're gonna go through in these 30 minutes, we wanna help you understand how are you and your staff gonna manage their day. So whether you have an admin working with you, a staff accountant, whether you're a partner or an owner, how are you gonna manage your day? How are you gonna add in, add, uh, do a timesheet? How are you gonna see what jobs that you're working on? Um, improving collaboration really speaks to the platform. Because there are seven modules integrated, when you update a field in one module that has a similar field in a different module, it will seamlessly update for you. So you're getting back time to be more productive because you're not entering that multiple data into different software programs. Um, it also improves collaboration of your team because everything is much more visible. Uh, you'll be able to see what staff are doing. They're gonna be able to interact with each other and of course, all in real time. If you happen to be on the phone and you're a business owner or partner, Managing your business, I'm gonna show you some things uh, that will allow you to do that. And of course, we want to embrace mobility. So when I get in there, I'll just quickly again explain how you're gonna access your CCHI firm environment. So just prior to getting to the solution presentation, because that's the most important part of today, I'd really like to do my second poll question, which actually is the fourth poll of the day. So if you don't mind to queue that up, Marilyn, that would be fantastic. So folks, you should be seeing the fourth question. We'd just like to get a sense of how many employees are in your office. You might be a sole practitioner, and the other choices are there for you. Two to five, six to 10, 11 to 15, or maybe you're a larger firm with more than 16. Everybody's eager today, Shannon. We're already at 90%, so I'm just gonna count everyone down from five, four, three, two, and one. 
Thanks everyone for your responses. And there are your results, Shannon. Okay, they're not quite, oh yeah, okay. So more than 20 is, is the largest. Mm -hmm. Or say over 16. Okay, perfect. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so can you see my screen again, Marilyn? Yes, it looks yeah. great. Perfect. Okay, so for many of you, this is your first time seeing CCH iFirm. So I'm going to walk you through a little bit of what you're seeing. Uh, all I've done is opened up a Google Chrome web browser and put in my URL for my environment. You can use Internet Explorer, Safari, Firefox, whatever browser choice you prefer. I just happen to use Chrome. You can use whatever you, you do like. So I've put in my URL. I've also signed in everything's password protected, login, and I've now got into my environment. You'll also notice I have multiple tabs open. That's the beauty of a browser-based uh, platform like this. You can have multiple tabs open in all the different areas you and your staff are gonna be working in, and you'll be able to get around very quickly. I do wanna point out the navigation panel on the left. This is going to house all of the modules a firm would choose. Mine, of course, is fully loaded for uh, doing these sort of demonstrations. And you'll be able to always have dashboard. That's something everybody gets, team directory and reports, obviously. And you just simply click in there, and there are submenus to guide you further. I want to touch on the dashboard. This is a very important integral piece. You can pretty much get anywhere in iFirm from your dashboard. And all of these reports are called widgets. Now, my dashboard's fully loaded to show you different reports. But not all of this information will be available to every staff member because you are going to create roles and you're going to provide those roles with access to view, read only, uh, modify uh, records. So even though everything I'm showing you is to, for the demonstration, know you're going to be able to uh, have certain things not visible to everybody. So do you want to keep on top of the work and progress jobs in your environment? This widget here in the top uh, right-hand side will guide you. It'll show you what is, what are, what's the top work being done here in our firm. Do you happen to just be one manager or an owner or a partner and you want to filter down this report to get a little bit more honed information? You can filter down a lot of these reports to just focus on what you're responsible for or staff are working on. You'll be able to see those overdue jobs very quickly. Again, all of these records are in real time. You can click into any of the records, open up that job, and have a look at what's going on. So managing your business. Are you a partner? Do you have multiple partners? You'll be able to see your AR by partner, your WIT by partner. Always keep track of your revenue. Of course, this isn't a fully live environment, so my don't have a lot of data in mind, but you can see that, you know, seeing your annual revenue, how you're trending year over year can be very valuable information. It's right on your dashboard and you don't have to do any analytics. It'll all be done for you. You can see your AR, maybe your top 10 accounts receivables that are outstanding. Do you or any of your staff allocate out work to resources? Well, very quickly you can see which of your staff members have a lot on their plate and which staff member staff members are available to take on some more work. Missing and incomplete timesheets. This is a great widget for every staff member because we want to ensure, iFirm is really reliant on timesheets being done daily. And this widget will alert any staff member who has it on their dashboard, which are incomplete or missing and need them, needs their attention. Now, even though my dashboard, um, is kind of the same per role, every person has the ability to customize it. You can drag and drop reports around, you can you know, clear off a report if you just feel it's not valuable. Managing your day. I like to point out this report, my ordered jobs. Every time I log in, I can see all of the jobs that I am responsible to work on and my manager has put them in the order of priority in which I'm to work on them. So. This is a great widget for everybody at the office to have because it's going to guide them when they come in in the morning as to what their responsibilities are. So when we do that, we're just gonna click on the top job that I'm responsible for. And I really wanna focus on this module called Jobs and Billing today, because this is our most popular module. I'm gonna quickly and briefly touch on our portal and our contacts module, but I think this one's the key one for today's audience. 
So in iFirm, you're going to have a contact module in which all of your contacts are going to be loaded, and there's lots of things you can do in there, which I'll touch on later. But you start by adding your contacts, and then you're going to add a job for all the different things that you're doing for your client. This happens to be a notice to reader. Maybe you're going to do a bookkeeping job, a payroll job. So you're actually going to create a job for each different job that you're doing because you want to isolate and start giving you some information about how you and your staff are doing on completing each of these individual jobs that you're doing. So you can see I have this notice to reader job. I'm just going to quickly uh, click in the job setup. You're going to fill in a few fields when you create this job, right? The job type. Of course, this list is configurable. You can uh, make adjustments based on what work you provide. You're going to put in some of the roles who's going to be responsible and are working on this. Target start and end dates, which can also alert you when target end dates are coming up with email reminders. Next, you're actually going to add resources to work on this job. This is a little bit uh, like a budget. You're going to add your employees, and you're going to give them the hours you want them to work on this job. So we can see we've allocated 24 hours of work amongst our staff to complete this notice to reader job. What I'd like to point out is iFirm's really great at pulling a lot of this information together to give you some statistics. If you had to, in your present situation, figure out how many hours it's taking you to complete certain jobs, I'm imagining that would take some analysis and probably somebody putting a lot of information into an Excel spreadsheet and crunching numbers. iFirm's gonna give you some of those statistics just simply by you and your staff working in the environment. We even have client profitability reports as well. So you simply set the job up, and I'd love to let you know we can actually set up jobs to recur. And we know that more than 90% of jobs in an accounting firm are recurring jobs. So why not let iFirm do all of that admin for you? We'll touch on that a little bit more when we get into contact. So I've set up the job, and I'm going to start working in the job. I do want to point out checklists. Checklists are used quite widely by many firms that I've spoken to in the last three years. Checklists are a great way to guide staff and let them know what they're responsible to complete throughout the life of this job. So I've created some notice to reader checklists. Every time I create a notice to reader job, these four checklists are automatically added. When I click into one of the checklists, this is where that accountability and traceability starts to bubble up. I can see which staff member has completed the different tasks in this check checklist, as well the date and timestamp. So these can be invaluable. Also, just even look at this visual. We get even a good sense of where this job is. We've only completed three of the four file preparation stages and the review phase as well, only one of the three in the second checklist. So there's a little bit more work to go on this specific job. As I scroll up, again, just to point out the allocated resource section, not only are we seeing those 24 hours we allocated out to our staff, we're now seeing any hours they've put against this job. So right now we're in good shape. We have 16 hours left of work on here. But do you happen to be uh, maybe a partner or owner? Do you want to keep track of jobs and when they're going off the rails? Well, this is a very handy widget to be on your dashboard. It will give you the top 10 resource allocation variances. So this is showing you staff where you've given them hours to work and they've now placed more hours than you wanted. So we've got an issue. Well, let's click into Sarah's name and see why she has spent four extra hours. So as we see in this job that uh, we have Sarah working on for Jane, she has worked four more hours than we've requested. A great feature in the job module is the ability for staff to add comments. These add value, they give information to the other members that are gonna be working on it. So we can actually see that Sarah let us know that she performed some out of scope work for the client, which resulted in four hours of research. Well, now we can be very agile and we can see this far before the job needs to be built and we can reach out to our client and ensure that we can capture that extra work that Sarah has done. Why? Because this is in real time. We have widgets that show us this information quickly, and we can get in and see, the, see what's happened and reach out to our clients. 
So back to that notice to reader job. Again, comments are very valuable. If you happen to be a partner or owner, or maybe you're the first person to work on this, this is an area where you definitely want to put in the comments of how is this job, how is the job going? What kind of things are being done? Where are any touch points with the client? Again, you see the accountability and traceability because you see who placed the comments and when. How are you going to update this job and you've got the status, you want to get transition it to another staff member? So we use our update status button in the top left. Right now, we can see that this job was waiting for information and Margaret is currently responsible. Currently responsible is always the person who has the file in their hands or is working on it. But that information's come in and Margaret would like to transition the job to another one of the allocated resources, Sarah, because now the file's ready for Sarah to work on. So we simply update the status, transition it, and we could set up emails to go out so Sarah's just received this email letting her know that now she is now responsible for the job. So she knows Margaret completed her portion and now the ball is in her court. Now Sarah will see this on her dashboard under my ordered jobs and she will also have another section called jobs assigned to me that she can look at as well. So there's many ways for Sarah to know that this job's in her hands, but some of the, our clients just love those email reminders giving the staff an alert. So now we can see that this job status is in progress and Sarah is now working on it. Of course, Sarah is going to continue to update the status and of, of course transition the responsibility when the time comes. But we want Margaret to add her time now. Margaret just completed her work, so she can add time in three ways. She can add a timer, if you're familiar with timers. You just start and stop the timers based on the different activity you're doing. These are customizable timers, so you're going to put in the information of what you're keeping track of. That's the first way you can add time. The second and third way to add time are to go to the My Timesheet, and you can set up your environment in units. So you can see presently, just for my environment, I have it set up in six-minute units. You can have it down to the one minute unit. You customize exactly how you would like your environment to be set up. And the other option is um, you can have a start and end time as well. So instead of units, you're gonna have two blocks and you're gonna put in the start time and the end time for your timesheet if you wanted to capture it in actual time. For today, I've put in a uh, half an hour of time that Margaret spent finishing up and transitioning the job to Sarah. You'll also notice we could have transitioned the job here in the timesheet section. So we've amalgamated these two steps. One of the comments and feedback I hear is, this is great that you amalgamated these two steps because often my staff forget to change the status of the job or transition it. So by putting these together, we're also giving you uh, back some time to do some more value added activity. Now your staff are gonna put in the activity code that, of what the work they were doing. Of course, that list is configurable, and we can add comments as well as to the specific work we were doing. So we've added the time for our work on that job, and of course, the staff are gonna continue throughout the day to add their timesheet and fill in all the information for the day and they're always alerted here as to how many units are left for them to complete their day. Again, that second reminder of doing a full complete timesheet on a daily basis. We also have non-billable and paid non-billable um, timesheet entries available. Of course, um, you know, you wanna customize those lists. That is uh, exactly what you can do in iFirm. So going back to the job that we were in, that notice to reader, so we've shown you we've created the job, we've added our resources, our resources have worked on it, they've updated the status, they've transitioned it amongst each other, they've put in their time. So let's say we're ready to bill it. iFirm, we can actually invoice directly from the job or we have an, you can invoice in bulk in a job to invoice section. For today's purposes, we're just going to show you a draft invoice so we can see that notice to reader that we've set up and created. Um, we've got a description that we are gonna put in already. 
you put that in the background, it'll just auto load for you. However, you always have the ability to hand type and add further information. You can change the layout. So if you did need to show time of any sort, uh, you'd be able to add the time. You'd also be able to add a whip line as well. So if you have other work with Merrily, you'd be able to, um, you know, add that information and, you know, fill for multiple um, work that you're doing for the client. You're going to finalize the invoice. Of course, this is exactly what we uh, agreed to, and now you're going to invoice it. Very simple and easy to invoice. You just send out the email to your client. Your client's going to get a customized uh, note from you in an email format with a, a view your invoice to the template that you chose. Those templates you're going to customize with your logo and header and information that you want. And now we've simply sent out that uh, invoice to our client. Going back to the job, we can see we've reached that agreed fee. We can close the job. We can lock those timesheets. Also want to point out we have WIP transfer available, obviously, uh, from current jobs into newer existing and existing into current. As well, uh, you can view the WIP, and we've got write-offs and write-ons. Just wanted to quickly point out our client portal. Uh, this is another module, again, integrated in this platform. Portal is a safe, secure way you're going to be able to tra transfer information, like share files with your client, and your client can upload and share with you. So that, that last screen was a view of all of your clients. I've chosen ABC Pharmacy. I just want to show you how simple and easy and risk-free it is for you to sh share information with your clients. So if you needed to upload and share documentation in a safe, secure manner, not by email, email is not safe and secure, so you want to protect your client's information, you simply go and select files you want to send them, or you can drag and drop them there. And we've now uploaded two pieces of information for our client. Our client has received a nice email letting them know that a new file has been sent to them via client portal, and your client can log in and retrieve the documentation. The view for your client portal side looks almost identical. It's very simple for your client to choose a folder and upload information and share it with you. So this is a great way to, you know, get their T1 slips, get uh, the bookkeeping file that you might be doing for them. You really want to protect your client's data. I'm now going to just quickly show you our contact module because this module is included with any one module you're going to choose. So you really want to have a contact module storing all of your contacts. You'll notice you're going to have the ability to categorize them as well into the different um, you know, appropriate buckets. When looking at a client, there's just a couple things I'm going to touch on. This is at a very high level. The contact module has all of the other modules showing or integrated into it. So even though we're looking at ABC Pharmacy's contact information on the summary tab, we could see all of the jobs related to ABC Pharmacy. When your client calls you, guess what? You're going to be able to click on the job they want to speak about, and you're going to have it right in front of you. You can let them know the status. We can see this one's complete. You can see that our staff member David's working on it. We sent out an invoice. We can see those job comments. We've just made our client feel extremely special and that really, you know, really important because we have that information available. We don't have to say to them, I'm going to go check around the office and I'm going to get back to you. You can answer their questions right away. So you can see all the open jobs, closed jobs, as well, all of the recurring jobs. So don't forget, you can set up jobs to auto-create for you and Nobody has to do that admin, so it'll just auto-create. Nothing's falling through the cracks anymore. Um, the, uh, you'll be able to see the whip and billing on the whip and billing tab. You can create relationships between your contacts. And one thing we really like to share is notes and reminders. Are you thinking of succession planning? How are you going to transfer all of the information your client has shared with you with everyone else at the office or new staff? Well, add notes to your contact record of things your client shares with you that is important and pertinent to other staff. So you can add notes here, but I also want to point out you can even put reminders in iFirm that will automatically email your client. So this is just an example. I know that ABC's year end was on the 31st of January. 
I have this email go out every year, December 1st. And I don't have to worry about it. I don't do it in Outlook. It's here as a reminder in iFirm. The other staff have access to it. So if I happen to not be around or, you know, if somebody's leaving the company, you don't have to worry. All the information's in iFirm and this will automatically email. You can tailor the message a little bit each year and just have it repeat for you. So this is something our clients like. They want to remind about HST filing. They want to remind about the upcoming T1 season and how excited you are to work on the personal taxes for your client this year. These notes and reminders is a great way to do that. So I'm just going to pop back into my presentation because there's a couple more slides prior to us finishing up. Now, I told you there were seven modules in iFirm. So our seventh module is our new CCH iFirm CAC module. So we now have T1 and T2, and shortly uh, T, the T tax, uh, tax forms is coming later in the fall. Um, but we have, it's our first cloud-based professional tax software in Canada. We built CCH iFirm tax from our tax prep product, which is our flagship product and leading uh, tax prep is uh, used by 30 of the top 30 accounting firms. So we leverage tax prep to build iFirm tax. But the other six modules are up here on the screen, and we touched on the contacts module, which I mentioned was included with any one module that you're going to select. We touched on portal, which is your safe, secure way to share documents with your client, and your client can upload and share documents with you. Portal is free for your first year if you also choose the jobs and billing module. So jobs and billing, obviously, it allows you to create jobs, manage them, add staff. They can do their timesheets, invoicing, accounts receivable, and a, a bunch of reports um, to keep you on top of things. We also have a document management module allowing you to store your client files. Of course, that's visible only by you and your staff. We have an intranet module, uh, which is like a private internet site where you can upload uh, information, procedures, templates, as well as post company news. That's pretty good for larger firms or multiple location firms. And lastly, we have a capacity planning module, which works hand in hand with the jobs and billing module. It will adjust the capacity of your time with those timesheets being entered. And if you use recurring jobs, it's actually filling up your pipeline into 2019 and 2020, showing you maybe when you need to bring in more staff, or maybe where you have a lull and a project uh, that could be completed by staff. So you've got an ability to see that. So just, uh, again, this is our CCHI firm ecosystem. Uh, we have a lot more modules coming. This is our platform going forward. It has been so hugely successful and really needed. We need to take the firm into the future. People are looking for work-life balance or work, want the ability to log in. Uh, remotely here and there, work at a client site. So know that we have a very long project plan for this product. And how can you try it for yourself? We will provide uh, this information for you. We have a, com a complimentary trial. You'll get access to the entire ecosystem for two weeks. You'll be able to, with that iFirm tax module, which we didn't uh, go into today, but you'll be able to create five free returns during this trial period, and of course, it's so timely with that tax season right now. Uh, you can try iFirm Tax for T2. We don't offer any free returns. And here is your uh, website. So for a free trial, just visit go.waltersclure.ca backslash AS2018. So thank you. I know it's one o'clock. So uh, I'll pass uh, the uh, torch back to Alan, and thank you all so much for allowing me to present today. Thank you, Shannon. That was great. Boy, things have sure changed since when I was in public practice. You've really given us some insights into the firm of the future and how to be more efficient. Alan, are you on the line? I certainly am, and I'm going to wrap up in the next 60 seconds. I would remind you that within 10 days, you will get a copy of the recording, my teaching notes, my teaching files, the answers to all of the questions, and your CPD certificate. When you end the survey, uh, sorry, when you end the webinar, you'll be taken to the survey. And that survey has three new questions. The first question deals with how do I get more training on charts and we have 
a two-hour session that covers all of the things that I didn't cover today in depth. And the cost for that is $79 Canadian. In addition, I am considering doing some more detailed webinars. These would be two-hour and four-hour on various topics, including some on uh, Word and Outlook and PowerPoint. I would appreciate your feedback if you're interested in them. The two-hour ones will sell for 79 Canadian and be worth two verifiable CBDs. The four-hour ones will be broken up into two sessions spaced a little bit apart, and they're 129. So your feedback on that new initiative would really be appreciated. And on that, we're done. Thanks, everybody. It's a wrap.